guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm King Dino and on this episode we are still in lockdown in Melbourne, Victoria, but that's okay. I've come up with something to keep us entertained on this episode of 24 Hours in Lockdown. I thought because it's coming to the end of winter, this is our last opportunity to whip up some soups and I've got some really good soup ideas. So buckle in for it. I think it's going to be good. Let me just pop to the shops to grab the bits and pieces I need. Otherwise, most of us are already here. And uh, yeah, let's try one of my soups out. The first soup that I'm cooking is called Witchy Grub Soup. Yeah, I'll let you think about that for a second. All right, I'm off to the shops and uh, then we'll come back and cook this soup. Okay, back from the shops, I've got all my ingredients to make my witchy grub soup. Yes, you heard me right, witchy grub soup. So what is in this is onion, potato, creamed corn, cheese, curry powder, bacon, pepper. And I've got some crunchy sourdough there for afterwards. Now, you're probably wondering where the witchy grubs are. Well, they're just down here. No, I'm only joking. We're not using real witchy grubs. We're not using them at all. The reason why this is called witchy grub soup is because when I was a young boy, my mum was made this recipe, she found it, and the same week that she made it, she tasted real witchy grub soup up at our local shopping centre. And when she came home and made this for the first time, she said it was so uncanny that it actually tastes like witchy grub soup. So, that's where the name comes from. <sighs> Adam's phone's just rang. Anyway, he's working right here next to me. Five minutes later, now Adam's off his phone call. Um, we can get back to you. So, what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna peel these potatoes and cut them up. Gotta cut up the onion. Don't be too stressed the way you cut it because it's all gonna end up getting blended. And uh, we're gonna chop up our bacon, the same thing. Just cut, up, cut it up in small bits and don't panic too much about the way it looks. Gotta grate the cheese. And yeah, once we've done that, we'll come back and uh, pop it in the pot. Okay, so potatoes are cut. I have grated the um, cheese. Now, with it, it's just a tasty cheese. And with all these ingredients, you can go less or you can go more. So I've kind of gone on the more side. <laughs> so I've used about six big um, potatoes. I've got a heap, like you can see how much cheese I've got here. I've got a, oh, a whole little bowl of bacon and one onion, okay? So let's take this over to the stove top and let's start pouring the ingredients in. Okay, we've got our potatoes on the stove top and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour in our cream corn. Now, I'm using three cans. Again, if you're doing a small amount, obviously you use two. So in that all goes. And the third. Okay, what I'm gonna do is when I add the water in last, I'm gonna fill these up and give them a rinse around. So I'm gonna use all of that. None of it will go to waste. The bacon, all that straight in. The onion. The curry. Now I'm putting, again, you could go smaller if you're not a big curry person, but this does give it the taste. This does make it taste amazing. So I'm going with a fair whack of curry and we are making a big pot. It's gonna last us a year. Uh, and then we're gonna go in with the pepper, give it a really good crack. And then don't put your cheese in yet. We're gonna put that in last when it's all cooked and then we're gonna stir that through. So leave that there for now. And then what we wanna do, like I said, is fill these up Say halfway, give them a rinse around. Then what we just want to do, we just want to bring the water level up to the top of all your potatoes and everything else that's in there. And that pretty much is your guide. 
And that's it. So we're gonna give that a stir and we're gonna get that on the heat. And then we'll see what happens. been cooking for over an hour um, it is ready to blend so you can either use a blender or I've got one of these I don't even know what they're called but it's a blender on a stick and it's gonna blend it all up then after that I'm gonna start adding my cheese and just mix that through and then it will be ready to serve all right let's get blending <laughs> Now that that's blended, we've got our cheese and we're just gonna pour it in like that, mix it through. And then you can keep pouring it in as you mix it through. And this will take a little bit of that curry flavor away, tone it down a little bit. That's why I put so much in there. And that cheese is just melting literally melting away and then that is pretty much it we are ready to serve this so i'm going to go dish it up and we'll have a look at it and this tastes fantastic with a side of sourdough absolutely beautiful and there you have it my witchy grub soup well actually technically my mum's um with chili on top so now let's have a taste and see how this turns it out it's very hot it's so good and tasting it before the cheese went in it was a stronger curry taste but with the cheese in it it kind of just softens it out a bit and it's beautiful and like I said, you can adjust all the flavors. If you want more curry, less curry, more cheese, less cheese, more bacon, whatever you want. As long as you've got these ingredients and they go in there, you're gonna have a nice soup. Anyway, I better go feed Adam. Cheers. <laughs>was absolutely lovely last night and I tell you right now it's gonna be a big day so I'm definitely gonna need a coffee and Adam's already busy at work and I think it's time for his second coffee morning maybe a third maybe oh third coffee okay was I in bed that long and there's Twyla Twyla look at that how cute are you even she's up before me all right so coffee on and then I'll tell you a bit about the day. Got my coffee, I'm happy. Now I'm heading out the front to start up the van. Now, if you're new to the channel, we do own a Ford Transit van, it's been converted. That we take our puppy dog Twyla away in and we go on plenty of adventures all around Victoria. We've even been all the way up to Coffs Harbour and back again. There's heaps of videos if you wanna check them out. And um, trust me, just be careful, because once you start watching them, you're probably gonna to wanna to buy a van and start going away. But anyway, I've got to start it up. It hasn't been started for three weeks, so fingers crossed, the van starts. So this here is our Ford Transit van. I'll take you inside, you can have a quick look, and then I'll start it up. Twyla's inside already. She's out um, there, she is. She's a bit excited, she thinks she's going away now. But anyway, let's hop in the van and start her up. Okay, let's open her up, get some air in here. It's been three weeks. And then just behind here, there is Twyla. Hey, Twyla. Hey, what are you doing? All right, let's start this up. Well, it's been nearly four weeks almost since we actually went to Heathcote. It was such a good trip. We couldn't believe how many things... We
You right, Twyla? <laughs> I think she can see a dog outside. I can't believe how many places we discovered in Heathcote. It's like an hour away from our house and um, we had the best time. So make sure you do check that video out. But let's see if the van starts up after that amount of time. Boo! Yes. High five, Twyla. Maybe not. <laughs> Just want to say a big thank you to our sponsor today, Geelong Illustrator, and I have their manager on the Zoom call today to have a little chat to Claire. How are you? Hello, I'm good. That's good. Now, Claire, tell us about Geelong Illustrators and how it come to be. So, uh, Geelong Illustrators is a community artist group. Um, and our members can connect with each other and support each other. Uh, we have a studio gallery where they sell original artworks, limited edition prints, cards, jewellery and more. And we run workshops as well in our space. Ah, oh, so do you, do you run workshops yourself? Yes, I personally do. Um, so I run mindful art workshops, which a sort of, you're not really learning techniques. It's just about calming and relaxing and just doing some art to create something without really having a specific purpose at the end of it. Oh, that's fantastic. And um, with people are being in lockdown at the moment, I know a few weeks ago I did a painting on one of my videos. If you want to check it out, go down below. Uh, but otherwise, do you have any ideas for people what to do in lockdown, what to get up to to keep ourselves busy? And, yeah, what have you got any suggestions? Well, first I'll say I saw your artwork that you made. Very cool. And I like that you got your fingers in it because it's getting messy sometimes and doing a tactile experience can be very helpful for um, yes. art therapy reasons. Um, but what I would probably recommend is if you don't already own some watercolours, you can, you know, buy a really cheap set somewhere online. And watercolours are really nice and soothing. I don't know if it's just because of the water that's involved with it and things that are watery are just kind of more soothing, well, to me personally, but to lots of other people. Um, and not even to draw anything in particular, but just doing nice round blobby shapes on the paper. You can do abstract stuff and you can blend lots of colours. Um, it's just a really nice soothing activity to do and you really want to just be concentrating on the brush strokes and, you know, being in the present moment rather than worrying about if you've got an amazing artwork at the end of it. Oh, that's fantastic. I've, I actually haven't dove in, or dived into watercolours before, so I'll have to give that a go. Now, coming back to um, the studio itself, so do you sell prints? What kind of art do you have there? How many artists? Tell us a bit about that. Uh, so we've got about 50 members, I think, currently. Um, and they're all from the Geelong region. That's kind of our thing. You do have to be um, from Geelong and surrounding areas to be a member with us. Um, but we sell all sorts of stuff in our studio gallery. So if you're a member, you can sell anything that you make, whether that's um, jewellery, original artworks, art prints. Um, our biggest sellers are cards and um, art prints just because they're on a bit of a cheaper side. Um, but everything that we do make is locally made. So it's either made in Geelong or, you know, um, in Melbourne or somewhere in Australia. But majority of the stuff is made in Geelong, which is what our, we have a big focus on that. Yeah. And if I was looking for something special um, and it wasn't there, could I ask one of you guys to paint it for me or draw it for me? How would that work? Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you're after a commission of any kind, whether it's like an abstract or you want a pet portrait or a person portrait you can get in touch with us and we will then get you in touch with an artist to be able to complete your vision I guess so um a common one being the pet portrait and the people portraits so if you have a photo of um someone so like Twyla you know, my dog Twyla pet, yep and you want to immortalize that in a nice drawing rather than a photo that might look a bit dodgy um they can just make a nice version of it um and we've got all sorts of different um, artists of different mediums. So watercolour, pencil, digital, acrylic, realistic styles, cartoony styles. There's really wow. something for everyone. Wow, that's a big. So whereabouts are you located? That's a big selection. So our studio gallery is currently closed because of lockdown, um, but 
when we're opening in, you should come for a visit. So we're in Geelong in the CBD at 105 Marable Street. Yep. And that is part of the Market Square Shopping Centre, which is a great shopping centre because it's got lots of other local businesses as well. Like at least, I want to say 70%. Yep. of the shops in the centre are like local to Geelong. You can't get them anywhere else. Now, the last time I was in your store um, when it was open before COVID times, um, I've been in twice and both times it looked completely different. So are you always changing your art in and out when we are open? Yeah, so we have lots of group exhibitions um, and we usually will pick a theme and then everyone has to make an artwork based on that theme and then we'll turn it into a uh, zine, which is like a mini magazine. Yeah, so, so yes. um, sorry to interrupt you. But yeah. this, so this is the one you sent me in the mail. Um, and yeah. this, is, uh, this is your most recent one, I think. Yes, yep. that's our most recent one, like a version. So, oh, so these are some pieces. Our versions of famous artworks. Wow. And then the one before that, was that this one here? Uh, kaleidoscope. So, yeah, that was everyone got a colour of the rainbow and then had to create an artwork around that. So sometimes the theme will be a colour theme. Sometimes it'll be more open. Um, other times we've had it, like, with size restrictions. So you, you might have to create an artwork to a specific size canvas. Um, and our next exhibition that's coming up uh, is on the theme of things that make me happy because we just wanted to have a bit of a think about happy things because everyone's been super depressed and everything because of COVID. So nice to focus on the positive sometimes. Yeah, I was going to say that even this this one, when you had this one, it's so colourful and the colours are beautiful. So I can't wait to well, see we that. Do, we do like lots of colour. It just seems yeah. to brighten us up. Yeah, that's right. So um, we are all, I'm sure everyone's looking forward to coming down to Geelong and visiting you guys. All your information I'm going to pop down below. So check them out, guys. You will love their artwork. And like we, like we said in the conversation, if there's something special you want, get in contact with Claire and the guys at Geelong Illustrated and they can put you in the right direction to the right artist. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sponsoring this episode, Claire. Thank you and good luck with lockdown. Thank you, Jean. Thank you very much for having me. No worries. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. See you, Claire. Bye. See you soon. Bye. pumpkin soup so pretty much it's done the same way as your normal pumpkin soup but we're roasting all the veggies so what's going to go into my pumpkin soup i've got a butter pumpkin here i've got three carrots one onion three potatoes and i'm going to cheat a little bit by using the italian mixed herbs and a pre-done um, veggie stock so i've got everything here now let's get it all cut up and in the oven to roast. Okay, now we've cut our veggies up. We're just gonna pour some oil over the veggies. Like so, got some more on this side. And then we're gonna grab our Italian herbs and we're just gonna sprinkle over the top. And we'll grab our garlic. And just sprinkle that over top of the veggies. And then we're just gonna mix that through. Make sure you wash your hands. Mix that through. And I've preheated the oven at 180 degrees. And then we're gonna throw them in until they're roasted.
Roast veggies are out of the oven, they are cooked and they smell and look amazing. But before we move on, I just wanna give a shout out to Jody. Look how fantastic her pikelets turned out. They look so good, they actually look probably better than mine. But <laughs> how good are they? So if you do make any recipes from my blog, please do me a favor, send them through. Um, you can get me on King Dino's Adventures on Instagram. Send me a photo and I'll pop them up on the next video. Awesome guys. Well, good job, Jody. And uh, let's get back to the soup. So what we're gonna do is pop the veggies straight into the pot. So like that. Now, if there's any onion that's really black, take it out. Because otherwise you have little black things floating around everywhere. Have it all in and get all those juices in there, beautiful. And then just flatten your veggies, just so it, we can see how far they come up the pot. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our veggie stock, pour that in. Use the whole thing. And that's that. Now I hadn't put any salt or pepper in yet, so now I'm gonna put my pepper in. Now with the salt, I don't think you will need it. The, st the stock's normally quite salty. So I will cook it up, blend it all, and then taste it at the end. If I feel like it needs more salt, I'll put some in. But otherwise, pepper, I love my pepper. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook this a little bit on the stove top. Then I'm gonna get my little blender and pop it in. If you don't have one of these little guys, you can use your blender. All right, let's get it on. Now that that's been on for a little bit, I'm just gonna pop a little bit of water in just to bring those water levels up a little bit. Let that keep cooking and then I'm gonna give it a blend. There you have it guys, my roasted pumpkin soup. So next time you make your pumpkin soup, think about roasting it. So anyway, I'm gonna tuck into this now and um, let's give it a taste. Very nice, you can definitely taste it, taste the roast veggies in it, it tastes so good. Also what I've done is I've put some chili on it um, the Italian herbs does have chili in it, but just to give it an extra kick, love putting a bit of extra chili on it, and or you can put your cream, but for us, we go on the chili. I'm just gonna keep eating it now. Mind me. Now you might think I've got rocks in my head, pardon the pun, but I've been thinking about what we're talking to Claire from Geelong Illustrators about, and I think I'm gonna give a go at painting some rocks. Now look, I don't have watercolors here. I'd have to order online, but I'm gonna use some stuff from around the house, like rocks. I've got a little bit of gesso here, and then I'm gonna probably use textures, um, because I find that I'm not the best with paint. Uh, and so yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm doing a base coat of just white. So you could actually use, if you don't have gesso, you could use just a white acrylic paint, or you could even use the old uh, liquid paper. So, because it paints straight onto rocks with no problem. So find the side that you want to use it to paint and then just get your gesso or your white acrylic paint and just give that a coat and then try to put a nice edge on it. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to paint up some rocks, let them dry, and then I'm going to go around our neighborhood, put them along the footpath so when people walk along, they'll find them and they might brighten up their day. So it's something you can do with your kids, your family, whoever you want, you can do it by yourself. But even this, I'm finding this quite relaxing. Anyway, let me get back to painting my rocks white. So 
So the gesso has dried, Adam's getting in on this project. He's doing one right now as we speak. I'm gonna start doing one as well. Now you don't have to go too, you know, crazy. I think the more basic they are, the better. This, so, is, this is gonna be basic. <laughs> Adam reckons it's gonna be basic, but um, all I'm gonna do is for this one, I'm doing my two eyes, you can see that? And then I'm just gonna do a little diamond underneath the two eyes. That's a little beak. And then I'm gonna put some goofy eyes that are a little bit of wonky. And then, a bit of a, well Adam's got the one I want of course. A little bit of a <coughs> orange beak. Like so. And then, I'm gonna paint him yellow. And it's gonna be a little chicken. How cute, imagine walking along a footpath and finding yourself a little chicken rock. So we're just using Texas, but again, you can use acrylic paint and use whatever you want around your house. If you've got a bit of bling, you could bling them up, make them really special. Oh. Or you can just, you know what? If you don't even wanna go for a walk and leave them on the track, you can leave them on your neighbor's doorstep. How cute would that be than walking out finding a rock decorated by you. Make sure it's good because it might end up through your window. I'm just joking, I'm just using humor. You can't pick your neighbors. Can't pick your neighbors. We love our neighbors. Our neighbors watch my YouTube video. We love you. Um, I think I just got a quick tip. Uh -huh. What's um, your if tip? If you're using textures, do color first and then do black outline second because you're gonna find that black's gonna, if you do black, black second, it may yeah. make the colour bleed or run and look dirty. Yeah, see, normally you would test this out, but we haven't. We're just doing these. <laughs> so, there you go. There's a tip. All right. I think my chick is almost done. Okay. Well, I've got to run. But that's mine. What? Well, you've got to sh show that the guys took... that can't... Look at how cute that Oh, two minutes, you watch about two minutes. There's a thing same for the kids to do. And there's my little oh. chick. <laughs> Look at that. How cute. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to finish these rocks off and then we're going to take Twyla for a walk and go deliver the rocks. I just love them. They got a little minion. I mean, imagine just walking along the street, finding a little minion. I mean, oh, a ladybug, <laughs> a kite, a caravan. Um, I was going to do our van, but I thought, being that it's white, it's going to be pretty boring. Uh, so I did a caravan, and as well my little chick. So there you go. There's some ideas for you. And um, yeah, just look, if you Google, you can copy pictures from the internet. You could do your favorite TV show, cartoon characters, whatever you want. And um, I'm sure it'll brighten up someone's day. And that's what we need in times like this. So hopefully that's given you a good idea to keep you entertained. And I tell you, I actually just enjoyed that. I just, I think when I'm doing a proper big piece of artwork, like I did a few weeks ago, as relaxed as it can be, trying to come up with the ideas can be like, Ugh. but literally you can just zone out with this, have fun with it, and it's only a rock. If you stuff it up, just paint back over it and do it again. All right, guys, well, I better saddle up Twyla and go for a walk and start dropping these off. It's getting dark now, so it'll be nice that they stay out overnight and in the morning when people go for their first morning walk, they might find a minion. Come on. You ready to go? You ready? You want to go for a walk? You want to go for a walk? Oh. 
Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Twyla and myself are just back from our walk. We have had such a good time delivering those rocks. Now I just wanna yell out a big thank you to Geelong Illustrators for sponsoring this episode. They've been fantastic. Thank you guys and thanks Claire for coming on and talking to us. Also, I'm gonna pop all the information down the bottom so definitely go check them out. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, please, like, subscribe, and tell everyone about us. And until the next episode, hopefully Sunday, maybe Monday, we'll see you then. Thanks, guys. <laughs>